Welcome to this week's episode of 47 Motorsports, which is sadly the season final. Because the last one ever this year. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, please don't end it on ever. That's one way to tell me I have to just buy more equipment. <laughs> so we're kind of going to do it where each year is a season. So this is the end of 47 Motorsports season two. We're going to give you a quick update on stuff that's been going on. And since it's Christmas time, we're going to talk to you about my Christmas present to myself. <laughs> The bargain of the century. Before we start to talk about the greatest purchase ever made. The greenest purchase ever made. It is, it's really efficient. <laughs> <laughs> talk us through, let, let's talk a little bit about what we've done this year. So this has been our first kind of full year. I suppose it has, yeah. Yeah. Um, we built... So what did we do? We, we got that running. Well, that was this year, wasn't it? I think so, it runs. This now runs, which was a big deal because realistically this was meant to be a parts car. Yeah, that's what we were told. And we were sold it as a parts car. So that, that's running. Still we, needs some finishing. We originally planned to have it painted for the Christmas we wanted, Yeah, we wanted to paint it, but uh, stuff, Somebody had stuff to go got to America. America. <laughs> stuff got in the way. Um, stuff got in the way, but... Mind you, we're gonna have to finish those arches and stuff before we paint it. Yeah, but we could have had all that done. Yeah, we, could, we will do. But we didn't. At some stage. This year coming, we want to get this thing blue. This thing will be, well, it's gonna say finished. It's gonna be blue. It's gonna be blue. Whether it's finished or not, it'll be painted. Yeah. So we've got that to look forward to. Yes. Uh, this year we bought this, which still hasn't had anything done to it yet, unfortunately. It's been one of those years. It really has, where all we have done is buy stuff. Yeah. And not actually work on not stuff. Not actually fix stuff. This one next to it also still needs work. I mean, they all need work. Oh, I mean, yeah. Needs work to be on the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yellow 115, talk us through it. I seen you hankering at that when I arrived. I was, I was messing about with it. Um, talk us through. So, what I did was, this morning I took all the plugs out and cleaned them off because uh, I think it must have been running very rich because they were a bit gummed up. I've put new diaphragm in the carburetor because they can go bad and they can cause problems on them. So now we've got it to the stage where it starts, but it's sort of dying shortly afterwards. So kind of like me in the night out. Yeah, because I think it could be a choke issue. It could just be dying when it's cold, you know. I mean, we all have a good choke sometimes. Lovely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. <laughs> so um, what's planned on this for next year? Well, just get it running, I this, suppose. This needs to run. This is uh, going to be a wedding car, hopefully. Right. In six months' time. That has been the plan for about. 18 or 19 or 20 months. No just, harm, but if this is to be a representation of that marriage, <laughs> that's not a good omen. <laughs> Look, it's it's solid, like like the marriage, it's solid. <laughs> With any luck, it will be, because I haven't really, you know, the fallback probably would have been the Jag, which has now gone elsewhere. Gone elsewhere, So it, somebody bought my Jag that is doing a burnout. And I really hope whoever bought that Jag sees this channel and watches the intro and sees me lighting her up <laughs> like fuck doing a mad sick burnout I'm thinking I thought this was car was like carefully owned mm, babied around <laughs> as of 2021 20, year end no further yes there's a ceremonial gunshot for it <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the camera will pick that up but <laughs> you think I'd let you roll in a Hyundai <laughs> Doris away past there in the Hyundai we Sunday drive. So what do we think is gonna happen with her old Monica here because... I actually want to get her back on the road. Are you serious? I want to get her back on as a beater. Are, are you mentally deranged? Why not? Give me one good reason why not. Do you want me to walk around it? <laughs> <laughs> it's scabby, yeah, but nothing that can be fixed. I mean... Oh, the A-pillar. The roof is literally trying to like... Detach. Get a divorce from the rest of the car. <laughs> I like this one. I like too. all of them. This was my first Mercedes. Yeah, this is your first mark. And look at it now. Look what happened. I give it to you and look what happened. What are even are those? <laughs> what? 
Ryzen's. Ryzen's. You don't like Ryzen's? Fucking graphics what? card sitting in. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you like AMD Ryzen's? <laughs> I didn't blow the head gasket. It blew its own head gasket. <laughs> it's tried to kill itself twice <laughs> now, Connor. <laughs> Let it die. So hopefully hope, this year. Hopefully that will see the road again. Whether it will or not, I don't know. You have to stay tuned. <laughs> you have to stay tuned and find out whether I make a bad financial decision. This is where we plug and say, make sure to subscribe to the channel <laughs> if you would like to see Monica saved. <laughs> <laughs> this year we also did a video on this. And, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna sell this. If you wanna buy this, contact us. Maybe we can do what those other YouTubers do and people will actually just come to them and buy their cars, but so imagine I doubt it. <laughs> One car we have that actually is saleable. <laughs> Oh, it's, so it's mean, actually it's, a good car. The rest of them are just like it's shit. in good condition and everything. It's had. Um, Please don't turn this into a for sale pitch. It's had a new roof. <laughs> it's literally had a new. Isn't that <laughs> not crazy? Like, imagine having a 2014 car that's had a new roof. I know. How does that even happen? Somebody jumped on it. Well, yeah, we know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's had a. It's had a time ago. <laughs> Please, please buy this car. <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm going to shit myself. <laughs> please buy it. <laughs> First mail one, 2014 at bar. That's how time I built. 10 grand. <laughs> oh, we should talk about one thing that's actually missing. What? One, two, three's not here. The one, that two, happened three. This year. Yeah, it was in our earlier video. The one, two, three has gone for welding. Any word on that? No word on that. Ryan Doyle's 504 pickups there as well at the minute. I'd rather they did his first because it's less work, I think. I thought we'll hold some of them. <laughs> but that was going to be about back it. in two weeks' time. <laughs> what did we estimate a month? At, at the, no, at the end of your video, you estimated it would be back in two weeks. For two weeks. That was a lie. That was, <laughs> that was total bollocks, but go on. <laughs> well, I think we're two months in now. Two months in. I think Maybe it is you a meant full, to say months. I think it is a full two months since I sent it off to him. It was a big job, like, and he just, he didn't give me a time frame at all. He just said, look, this is a big job. I'm going to park it down here and <laughs> <laughs> make it an even bigger job by the time I get to it. <laughs> Maybe. This is our latest addition to the fleet. It is my Christmas present to myself, and it is the biggest bargain I think we've ever purchased. I think it's fair to say. You think that's fair to say, do you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Look at it. Still a bargain though. It's still a bargain, yeah, but it's, there's, there's two levels of bargain. There's the, this is really, really cheap. I have a lot to do to it, but it was cheap in the first place. And then yeah. there's the, yeah. Then this there's is, the, uh, this is cheap. Holy good. shit, how did I get this so cheap? Yeah. That is this. Big bargain. So say hello to Evie, the 2005, W211 E Class. Not sure what the W211 is, or even what an E Class is. Here's a quick history lesson. Introduced in 1953, Mercedes's E Class, E standing for Executive Range, stands slap bang in the middle of the saloon range, above the entry level C Class for Compact, but below Mercedes's self proclaimed greatest car in the world, the S Class for Special Class. While initially it came out back in the 50s, the official title of E-Class didn't come along until 1993 with the facelift of the W124. However, E-Class still kind of represents the W120, the W110, fin tail, like ours, W114, or 115, again, like ours, the W123, <laughs> like ours, do you notice in the pattern here? And of course, the W124 and so on, you get the idea. This model here, however, the W211, lasted from 2002 to 2009. Before being launched, it was revealed in Men in Black 2. Go figure. Work actually began on the design process of the W211 in 1997, whilst they were still making the W210, with Mercedes taking their time to make sure that they got this one just right. So, why the name Evie? Well, it's a tribute to a legend, really. Evie Roskvist is a legendary Swedish rally driver that stuck it to the man in the male-dominated sport at a time when it just wasn't thought possible. 
dominating rally for Mercedes's factory teams in the Mercedes Fintail, she paved the way for female drivers of the future and gave hope to those aspiring to take it on the men at their own game. So tell us about this E-Class. So with this E-Class, believe it or not, no, no, this is gonna blow your mind. This Mercedes E-Class has a year's full MOT, it had a full tank of diesel. It had 400 pounds worth of work done to it just before I got it. It had green. It, it's green, yeah, it's not, we'll talk about that in a bit. But best of all, best of all, this Mercedes cost me 350 pounds. Nice. Technically it was 400 because, well, the owner had just put diesel in it. I felt bad, so I paid for the diesel. Yeah. <laughs> but that brought it to four, but the car is 350 quid. Nice. And now I'm going to show you around it and exactly why it's 350 quid. But let's look at the good stuff first. Okay, let's start with the good. First thing we're going to talk about, and obviously this is subjective, like I have the beer holder and all of that, but to me, this was the last good looking Mercedes. I challenge anyone that says otherwise, but I think after this, with the exception of the SLS and the AMG GT, but they're not really the same standard of car, mm -hmm. this is the last nice, sedan Mercedes. I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. I have wanted one of these since they came out. I had a Hot Wheels one as a kid. I adored this when they came out. And Did Hot Wheels do one happen. of these? No, they didn't. I said Hot Wheels. <laughs> you had knockoff Hot Wheels. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even Matchbox. It was, <laughs> it was honestly a Tesco own brand E55 AMG. Nice. It was slightly bigger than the Hot Wheels cars because it was the wrong scale. <laughs> 160th scale instead yeah. of 64. <laughs> It, it, it was budget, but it was cool and it left an image in my head that lasted many, many years that I've always wanted one of these. Didn't ever want a green one. I didn't ever want an estate one, but I'm glad I have both. Are you okay. green with envy at my great purchase? It actually matches my phone now I look at it. Phone's green as well. I can't show the viewers that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to put a big stock image of my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so speaking of the color, I don't know what the name is, but it's dark metallic green. And I'll be honest, the paintwork is not great. Traditionally, Condition that was forest green. Sorry to was it? Traditionally, yeah, on older stuff it was forest. It might still be forest green, I don't know. Well, I only seen the name like German and it was, I don't know, it was something green, God knows. Yeah. Invaded country green or something. I don't know what the Germans are still Polish calling green. things these days. <laughs> oh God, Polish green. It's <laughs> Polish green and it needs a good Polish to be fair. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so the paint itself is okay. There's a lot of wee stone chips and things, but yeah, I mean, it's to be expected. It's, to be expected. it's got 170,000 miles on it. So I'd expect a couple of stone chips. Yeah. But it's also a lot of handprints because this was owned by people with child, multiple child. But uh, with sunscreen, with sunscreen, yeah, nice. Which just eats into paint. But yeah. thanks to Mr. Ryan Doyle, we're going to do some experiment. Oh, it's nice and warm. We're going to do some. <laughs> it's bloody freezing at the minute. We're going to do some experimenting with polishes and compounds and stuff like that. Same goes for these headlights. Yeah, they could do with a restore. I've never owned a car with plastic, with plastic headlights. headlights. Yeah, yeah no. so I've never had to do this. So we're going to do a video on how to restore these. Cool. But one thing that is really cool about this car, if you stay right here, Connor, is this. Don't tell him what it is. I was going to ask you if that worked. Let's have a look. I don't know if it works. Should let's we find try it. Out? Yeah, let's right. try it. Oh, I just got, got, got it on my face. <laughs> does it work? Yeah. It doesn't seem to want to close properly, but it does Isn't work. It? Yeah, I know it's, it's sort of stuck. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Is there a, is there a specific, yes, <laughs> see if you were driving, the wind would probably push that shut. And it has, it's crap. actually like spread dirt onto your headlights. <laughs> <laughs> a good feature. Okay, so the reason that is there, for those of you who maybe don't know, is this, amazingly considering the age of it, mm -hmm. this was fitted with Xenon headlights, which are stupidly bright. You know when you're driving down the road and there's some dickhead in the BM or a Mercedes Blinded, yeah. and they get blinded by them. Yeah. It's probably because they have these. Yeah. Look at me. I'm the blinder now. Never turn my full beams off. <laughs> and what why does that does Xenon not get hot enough to clear the stuff off of a headlamp or what? I don't know, but I know that by law Xenon headlight cars have to have washers. That's what I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does it does it open like a Mercedes opens? It does. 
Oh, I. I'm sold now. <laughs> now, look at this engine bay for a car with 170,000 miles on it. It's quite clean. Yeah. I haven't done anything to this. This is as it was. And it hasn't had like a load of work D yeah. fixing to it. This is just as big. It's a Mercedes after. diesel. What would you need to do? Well, there is one problem with it, but we'll get to that. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yes, this is a Mercedes E220. Poverty spec. The lowest spec they did, but the lowest spec isn't as bad as it used to be. So, in our 123, it's the lowest spec of diesel and it's dangerously slow. Yeah. Like dangerously so. This will still keep up the traffic very well. You know what we haven't tested? What? Will it do a burnout? <laughs> do you want to try? Diesel burnout. Stick to the end of the video and we'll, do, <laughs> we'll try and do a burnout. <laughs> Diesel. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look at that. SBC. SBC. Oh, God. You like SBC brakes, huh? Right. So this is something that I only briefly understand, but I'm going to try and explain it to your average viewer. So, so this is like the first, second year. No, I think they came out in 2003. Yeah. The year or two after this, they did a facelift model and they changed the one few things that broke. They got rid of the SBC. They changed the type of brakes. So basically the brakes in this car are electronic. Who thought that was a good idea? I do not know. I don't think the world was ready for it at the time. But no, but hey ho, there they were. Hey ho, there they were. So it all works electronically and the brake pedal, every time you press it, there is a counter. You know, like the wee clicky things when you go into a nightclub and they're kind of clicking in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is one of those on it. And when it hits. <laughs> this is just like the analog one. There's a wee crate in the end. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so this counts how many brake presses you do. And when it hits either 200 or 300,000, the car throws up a warning and then says, Yep, you need to replace this now. Yeah which is ridiculous. And now I know the previous owner of this car and he went and got a brand new unit. I thought he got a second hand one. He did not, he put a brand new one. Oh, so it. actually the unit was replaced. Yeah, he replaced the unit with a brand new one and then went and got it coded to the car at right. the cost of 1,100 pounds. Bloody hell. This is only about two years ago, I think. Oh, so it's good to go. It's good. Because uh, what you can do from looking at it briefly, what you can do is you can reset the counter electronically with the uh, Mercedes stuff. Don't know if I like Usually the idea that. they're good to go for another until the warning light comes on again, at which point you would definitely you would have to replace it because it will just give up on you one day. And you'll have no brakes. You will. It's kind of scary that. It's yeah. And at least in a traditional hmm. traditionally braked car, you can Yeah, you can, you can work something like you can work something out, but this <laughs> if it if decides, it goes, it's it had enough. It's had enough. So, so there you go. Yeah, so that's been done. But to give you an idea as to what we actually plan on doing with this car, a while back we did a video called Cheap Luxury. Yeah. I believe, I think it's called that. But anyway, we did a video on it and I was talking about after a year of driving my XJ6, roughly how much did it cost? But mm -hmm. this time we're gonna actually do it properly. And as we go along, we're gonna do updates on this. So whilst this was a 350 pound car, will it stay a 350 pound car? Hmm. No. no. <laughs> Quite frankly. Okay, good video. No. <laughs> I've just saved us a load of videos. There. No, it won't. It, it will go up in price. It already has. But we'll get to that when we get to the negatives. But okay. for now, let's have a look around the rest of the car. So another thing that's been replaced on this, because again, I know the history of this vehicle in particular, because it was bought from family. The problem with these E-Class Mercedes, Mercedes, or whatever the plural is, yeah. we have experienced it ourselves with two. Does the 123 have it as well? What? The setup in the back, self level. Oh, the 123 does have, but it works. Which is impressive. It's very impressive. It's, it's very impressive. So, in all three of our E Class Mercedes estates, they have all had this setup from factory. Yeah. What it is, is it's called self leveling suspension. What it is on our three E Class Mercs is basically. Do you want me to, do you want me to explain yeah. it? Yeah. Here's how this works on me easily. I don't, is it the same on the two levels, do you think? I have no idea because I don't have it anymore, but go on. Okay, well, yeah, you don't even need to worry about it. <laughs> so it's for the good or ship of our viewers. For the viewers. It's not a traditional like airbag system like like you would have even found on earlier Mercedes, like the, the 6.3 W108s and things. 
it's not like that. There are still coil springs in the car. What they do is they supplement them with a hydraulic system that self-levels. So actually what you get is you get an extra special strut instead of a normal shock, shock absorber, which is connected to a hydraulic system. And it's got these accumulator spheres in it. And what happens in these is there's a nitrogen filled, like a balloon in there, which is your, it becomes like your airbag basically, or your, yeah, you know, your, your suspension airbag. Hydraulic fluid is allowed to flow in and out, and it should, in theory, keep, keep the level stable when you've got a heavy load in. When you've got the big load. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you load it up. Uh, and these on the 124 sit just amongst all the shit. <laughs> under all the crap that's in here, they sit. You can actually. Yeah, we're not going to dive into that. They're, um, they're in there, and you, you can take them out through the, through the thing. So basically what happens is you put big load in back of car, car sags down because heavy. These yep. fill with air or nitrogen, you know, whatever there's, it is. There's an nitrogen hope. balloon and then the rest of the sphere can be bigger or smaller with... Expanded or contracted. With, um, <laughs> it, allows, it allows the fluid in and out so it keeps a, keeps a level. When these go bad, like this one's gone bad, the balloons burst. The whole thing just gets full of um, hydraulic fluid. And as a result, you get really, really stiff suspension. Like, do you remember driving this and it was just... Ah, it hurt a lot. It just bounces. All of the movement of the fluid is just restricted completely and it just is... It's like having a seized up. shock absorber, basically. Basically, yeah. I'll show you in the engine bay where the reservoir for it is. Come around here. This is no longer about my 311, is it? It's just about the system. <laughs> so here it is in one of these. Just sits, sits on here. You fill it with hydraulic fluid to, I think, about here and a big dipstick who bought the car. <laughs> <laughs> and what you'll see on a, on a Mercedes that's an estate is this here. Whereas on saloons, you'll have a, like a blank spot here, but this, um, this is the pump for it. It gets run off of... Uh... Why are you looking? Stop that. What? This is... What? You're just meant to be explaining the airbags. Uh, yeah, okay. Back to the show. Basi okay, basically, that's how that works. And that just as a circuit around the car. Yeah, keeps, keeps it nice and level. It's really, really good system. When it works. And it's misunderstood. People, <laughs> it's the teenager of systems. People, people get lose patience with it and just delete it. Which leads, segues us on to... <laughs> which leads us to... This. Deleted. So as you can see, this is actually a... Doesn't look too bad there, actually. Pretty stance, it looks pretty good. Like, um, yeah. She's not meant to be that low. Basically, what's happened here is, unlike what Connor has explained in that, what he mentioned at the end was a lot of people just lose patience and delete it. That's happened with this. So this has had the airbag system removed in the back and has been converted to plain old coil and spring. Which is good, because that's one of the main yeah. things that goes wrong on these. However, it was done on the cheap with second-hand parts, so they have started to sag, so... I will add up costs for fixing that when it comes to it, but at least I don't have to convert it, so... So you'll probably just put new... <laughs> That's all I'm wondering, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> you'll probably just put new uh, heavy duty springs in with shock absorbers. Yeah, from a sedan, which will bring it up again and it look perfect when we not scrape the tow bar anymore. Those are like the two reasons that this car is an absolute bargain, because those are the two most expensive and most annoying things to go wrong, and they've both been sorted. Yeah. So, do you want to have a look at some of the cool let's, shit? Let's have a look at the quirks of the future. Yeah, because we've never had luxury like this before. This is this is something this special. Is new, this is a new level of uh, sun cream handprints. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Can we get in? Okay, let's before before we get into the car, right? Here's something really damn cool. Right. Check this out. Now, bear in mind. Now, all of this is kind of standard these days, but you yeah, have to think. Cadillac had it in the fifties. <laughs> but you have to think, right? This is a 2005 car. Yeah. What were you doing in 2005? Uh, not a lot, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was probably sitting playing Gran Turismo 4 and <laughs> I still wasn't, playing uh, San Andreas. I wasn't building an A-Class anyway. Like yeah, I sure as fuck wasn't designing cool shit like this. Check um, this out, what right? What does this do? So these are sensors, okay? Yeah. And they detect whenever headlights are coming in the opposite direction. Yeah. And they will turn on my headlights. Nice. They're like automatic, like light. Shit. Kind of it as far as interesting goes. In oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Good talk. The rest of the material is all inside, so let's go inside. Let's First of all, plush leather. Look at this interior. Oh, it's warm in here. It is still warm, isn't it? This was warm too. Probably because my fat arse has been on it. But no, these are heated seats, aren't they? Yeah, but they're not heating at the minute. 
But we'll get into that. <laughs> so, the condition of this interior is amazing for a car with this many miles. Now, obviously, it's grubby. Yeah, well, that's, that's but okay. that actually comes off if you scrape it. So, yeah, the condition of the leather is actually really good. Yeah, same goes for the seat bolsters and all. There's they are, no there's no wear yeah. at all. They haven't been repaired. They just haven't worn. That's incredible. So this was an optional extra. This interior, as far as I'm aware, would get yeah, the leather. tan leather and all that. First of all, steering wheel buttons. Yeah, this was one of the first cars to have steering wheel buttons as standard. Really? Every model of W1 W211 came with steering wheel buttons. Mm. They are cool in that they have volume and hang up and answer and go through the menus. Yeah. But there's no skip. Oh, uh, that's a shame. For the songs, so you can't you have to go all the way over here to skip songs. Yeah, which is really, really annoying. Like yeah. you don't notice how annoying it is. Until it is. you want to do it, yeah. Yeah. So as I mentioned, there's the aforementioned automatic headlights. So there's an automatic sitting on this and then it'll just detect if it's yeah. Bright or not outside. I grab the big 90s looking key, although it hasn't changed. No, the but I had the W201 key and it was the exact same as this and it was 90s, so that's kind of a bit of a key in the teeth. 202. Next up, we look at the center console, which is kind of dated looking, but also kind of really, really cool. Yeah. So up here you have all of your heater controls and things, but instead of having like the big slidey boys or the dials that you turn like we're used to in all of our things, this tries to be fancier. So there's dual zone climate control, which means you can have cold, I can have warm if I want. Yeah, which just, is... like, just like I want to for. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of remarkable how advanced <laughs> the older ones are. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing I really don't like is you can't quickly change where you want the temperature to go. So we know that you'd have your attorney boys. Yeah, what have you got to do next? If I want to go to my face, there it is. But if I want to quickly pull it down to the ground, I have to... Oh, you have to go all the way around the circle. That's yeah. That's inconvenient. Really annoying. Those are supposed to be convenience features, and that's not convenient. It's not convenient at all. This feature is really cool. This rest. is the rest feature. Now I didn't know what this does was. Does it put you to sleep? Does it? You're gonna put me to sleep. Are you not careful? <laughs> no, I'll put you to sleep. Shut up. <laughs> this is the rest feature, and what okay. this does is, say you've went for a drive, you've taken the wheels right to a game of football, <laughs> and you're sitting there watching them, and it's bloody cold. What do you do? But you don't want your big clack -a -dack -a -dack -a -dack -a -dack -a diesel going. No. Hit the rest button. You can yeah. have everything else turned off. And for 30 minutes, it will give you the last of the warm air from the engine. That's cool. Into the cabin. So what I use it for, because it's winter time, it's bloody cold. Pull up to the shop, turn the car off to go in, hit the rest button. Oh. The heat stays on while you go into the shop. It'll give you the heat. That's cool. So you can back in. Car still toasty and warm. Nice. Next up entertainment system so this is very dated but well spec nope oh, copyright copyright got us there <laughs> Don Henley's on the phone already I'll just tell him take it easy <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Eagles take it easy so it does look kind of dated but it's surprisingly well equipped like yeah. it has sat nav sat nav yeah uh, <laughs> phone but here's the thing about the phone okay it only wants to work with a specific phone is it a blackberry by the looks of it no it's even older nokia nokia it only wants to work with an old nokia because if you look in here if i pop this no pop this oh that is where the, that's where the old nokia would have went. went i wonder where it is now i don't know but i might look on ebay to try and find one i wonder who got the nokia <laughs> So that one there is what opens that, right? Yeah. This one Let's you open opens the whole, the whole thing. Shebang. Now what's oh that's the the cables for the telephone. And then you've got a couple of lights for your convenience. Yeah. And probably less storage space than you think, because this takes up that, quite that a lot of takes up all of it, I think. Oh. Basically. So, so you can just put nothing in there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, um, Mercedes. And here is what I use as a cup holder. But it's actually for a packet of cigarettes. It's for cigarettes, I think. But yeah. they give you that so you can like empty all your ash out, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, it's got the telephone and then serve is your menu and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's also got a DVD player. Nice. That's I very hit video. early 2000s. Tom? <laughs> <laughs> no, Tom Selleck's pulled out. <laughs> yeah, Tom Selleck's pulled out. It does have a DVD player <laughs> and there is a Magnum DVD in it right now. 
but it doesn't want to work. Cool than that, so you think, right, DVD player you can pick between having your CD DVD or videos. DVDs. Your DVD, there's DVDs that you're making. <laughs> but it gets better. It has a six CD disc changer, which usually... Ultimate early 2000s. Yeah, I should probably explain, because most of our viewership probably won't have a clue what one what of is. What the fuck's a CD? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is a CD? <laughs> Basically, a CD is a compact disc. Compact disc! <laughs> Like a record, <laughs> but played by lasers. Wow. <laughs> CDs uh, have music on them. Yeah. And you put them into a CD player and you can listen to the music one album at a time. If you're really old, you might have played games on CD ROMs. Whoa. Yeah. A CD changer was a big box that would have went in the boot and you put like four CDs into it and your head unit could pick which CD you wanted you so you could, didn't constantly have you to could change flick CDs. around through them all yeah unreal but Mercedes being Mercedes they didn't want you climbing into the boot trying to find whatever it is you needed nope they put it right here check this out how cool is that six whole CDs yep so Do you know what I like there the the cassette holder in the 190 has like they're not lights in the 190, but it's like a similar, like a red bar to show you there's one in. Yes, so I get there's that. There's a theme that's carried through there. So it's if little... you want your Nelly Furtado, you can have your Nelly Furtado. Thanks, Nelly. But say you want your Nelly Furtado, but when you're coming down the road, realistically, you might fancy a change in vibe and you might be like, hmm, Give didn't me... expect this to take as long to find the disc, not gonna lie. Uh, yeah, because it sort of sorts through them mechanically. Yeah, you might be like, hmm, actually, I fancy the black keys right now. Eclectic. All you do is be like, here, Bice, Have some change that CD for him there. And then, back you go. Like it never happened. Not even there. So, up here, you've got your reading light, which actually comes on under the mirror. Oh, that's interesting. Which is really cool. It's a wee small thank you light for your... Yeah, for maps. For maps. Maps! I've got maps. I've got maps. And then, you got this one. It's like light of these, but I like how they fade in and fade out. Yeah, that's very. Then you got this one, which controls the taxi light in the back. Good. Like, well, these, but oh yeah. These are all destined to be taxis. They stage. are. They are usually taxis. And this one is just will it work when you open the door or not? Oh, okay. Yeah. Up here, see this wee boy over here? Yep. The light sensor. And what that does is if there's headlights behind you, it deflects them away. It, Anti dazzles, you know the way in the old days. Yeah. The old days, the old days definitely. Yeah. You flip the thing at the bottom so the lights aren't as bright. Yeah. That does it automatically. Nice. Anti dazzle. No dazzle. I'm dazzled by how <laughs> well spec this is. <laughs> and of course, you have your heated seats and all the rest and so on. You can turn your traction control off too, which is pretty cool. Especially off. Especially off. <laughs> no, it's actually a Spanish off. It's Spanish. And a little throwback to the old days. You can put the rear headrest down from the front. So yes. you press this, and then they fold down and you can see when you're reversing. Like this is all fairly standard stuff. No, it is, yeah. Nowadays. But it is. this is probably as new as we're willing to go with cars, really, like 2005. This yeah. is already way too much for me. I can't work on this. No, there's too much electrics in there's it. Which uh, should probably then segue into why this was so cheap. Why was this so cheap? Okay, so. We've been sitting here, vibing, checking out all the electronics and everything's been working, yes? Yeah, we have. Okay, take a look at the dash here. So I'm gonna turn the car on. Imagine it was fixed. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Please visit the workshop now. Then it'll say, convenience functions temporarily unavailable. So see everything I just showed you there now? No. no, none of it works. No go. <laughs> like, the heater? Nope, no heat. Won't work. Will only work if you put it to the windscreen. Which, not safety. Convenient. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm really inconvenienced by it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the blower will no longer work. The heated seats don't work, they just flash. Rear window demister won't work either, it'll just flash. Nothing now works. The radio works. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with it. I have fixed uh, or I have replaced so many things. See, it's trying to protect its battery, so yeah. you would assume one so, of these things is drawing too much current. Yes, so to explain it here, these Mercs have two batteries. So unnecessary. 
basically there's a big battery in the boot which runs everything that's running right now then there's the small battery in the front which is about the same size as a motorbike battery and it runs all of your wee electronics like that so that the big battery doesn't get too much strain which is actually is sensible enough it's sensible when you consider the braking system on this car oh, yeah. <laughs> electronic. <laughs> That is why they want to make sure the brakes will always work so they divert those these things to the small battery. Yeah. But for some reason this is not charging the small battery. I've done some diagnosing, I've had it plugged in. Our alternator wasn't working. So now the costs, I will give you the costs that if you yourself were to buy one of these, you will pay. I haven't paid for any of it because friends and you know Yeah. Favours, shall we say. <laughs> But I've called in some favors, but I will tell you how much these things would have costs. Okay. Costs? Costs. Yeah, what plurals. they would have cost the dids. First of all, we replaced the alternator. Now, the alternator is the thing that turns when the car is running and charges your batteries. It turns out it wasn't charging at all. There was a bad rickety noise from it, which was kind of a telltale sign it was on its way out anyway. Yeah. But it turns out the car wasn't charging whatsoever when it was running. So then we got that replaced. I got it tested to make sure, and yep, it was done. So mm -hmm. we got that replaced, which would have cost 30 pounds. Yeah. So that means this, not including the diesel, that leaves this car at 380. Yeah. Next on the list, in the boot, there's a little module. It's next to the big battery and it's called the battery control module. What this does is it takes a signal from the alternator and the battery and detects how charged it is and then throws the charge it creates to either battery. Mm -hmm. It was telling the car not to charge. So whilst the alternator then was fixed and was turning, the car wasn't letting it actually charge. Nice. Thankfully, the local scrapyard to us, big thank you to Arma Car Breakers who were so, so helpful in diagnosing and fault checking with this and actually threw a lot of the parts in for free because they were really, really sound. Uh, nice. Thankfully to them, I managed to replace every unit in the charging system basically for nothing. Yeah. So that was a great, great help. So the car is still cheap to me, but you know, we'll count in costs is what it would have costed. So we replaced the battery control module. To get one of these on eBay, you're talking around a hundred pounds. That did work. That allowed the car to charge again because you can check if it's charging on the system and through the OBD2 port. Yep. So we have gone from a car that's not charging at all to a car that is now charging one battery. Mm -hmm. Turns out though, after having checked the smaller battery, it wasn't getting a charge. So next on the list was working out where the charge was going to. Now, the only other thing really there to replace is on the bulkhead or firewall if you're American, which apparently a lot of our audience is, believe it or not. Yeah. Probably the name 427 Motorsports. Oh yeah, probably. They're, they're probably. expecting Corvettes and Cobras and they get clapped out marks and shitty golfs. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, <deal>. guys. <laughs> Good deal, guys. <laughs> so basically on the bulkhead, there's a tiny little relay that whenever it detects that or whenever the battery control module detects that it's not got enough charge, it sends power to that relay, which then activates and charges the small battery. Yeah. I think I've explained that properly. Yeah. So I've replaced that too, thinking that maybe was the problem and that still hasn't fixed it. So I'm not entirely sure what's left to do. Yeah. There's a module at the front apparently that takes all of the signals from all the sensors and things and tells them where to go and what to do. They can give problems, so they're very Could expensive be. though. Yeah. The split charge relay, again, they give for free, but online they are about 20 to 30 pounds. Okay. Having replaced that, that leaves us at, so it leaves us at about 500 altogether. Now that problem still isn't fixed, but the car is safely drivable again. So that is why this was cheap. However, you know, there is a receipt in there for like 400 pounds worth of work that was just done to it. It's got, it's had new pads on the front, pads on the back, it's had new discs front and back, it's had a service, it's had the gearbox serviced. It's had a lot done, yeah. so there's a lot of money I don't have to spend. Let's move to the back and I'll show you some of the cool shit back there. All right, sounds good. This was a clever feature that they did here, and I believe this was actually introduced on one of my... One of your marks, yeah, okay, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so we move back here into the boudoir. We have yet another 12 volt socket. Nice. And a wee pocket. It's not an ashtray, there's nothing in it and it's carpeted at the bottom. You could probably spec it as an ashtray. 
Possibly. Maybe that's for holding your phone or something. I don't know. There's a pebble socket which hides in there. Then you have your vents here. You can turn them on or off. Yep. I don't think you can adjust whether it's hot or cold. It's saying maybe like a Maybach or something you can. Does this, this doesn't do cold air through the two cylinder vents anymore? No, does it? it does warm. They, they fix that. They fix that. I, yeah, I still think it's a good feature other than the fresh air through the center and warm at the sides. I'd like the option to just choose. Can you not choose on this? Oh, you probably can, yeah, but like, yeah. I like being able to. Yeah. Anyway, so in the center here, we have the armrest. Standard Mercedes fare. Yeah, standard Mercedes really, there's nothing fancy here. You can pop the top, and you can tell this is designed for like businessmen, or business women, or men. Business people, is this? Business persons. Is that the owner's manual? I think that's the owner's manual, they keep that Why in is that there? I don't know, but it's perfectly shaped to it, so I can't help but think that's meant to be there. It's sort of sensible, but if you had your kids in the back, they'd just probably like take it out and draw over it and stuff. Maybe your kids are mad keen to find out about your bins. It's so 2000s. E-class. Like that bluey tinge that Mercedes does, just like it's that just bluey early 2000s tinge. Yeah. And then this whole thing is just for the radio, and it's all one language. So really? It's not like this so is like four languages. Like, is the main one is only four languages? Yeah. Uh, that's all in English as well. Really? Yeah. That is a hefty Mercedes. So game. big. But uh, yeah, you can tell this is for like business people because there's a slot for your pen and like. Coke, paper clips, and yeah, if you're doing lines and things and such, such always such business activities, such stuff. Not that I would know as a mere peasant. Oh yeah, and there's so yeah, there's more couplers in the back than there are in the front. Mercedes has relented at this stage, and it's funny there's more couplers in the back than the front because this, this, ta this takes up one of the seats. There's technically no cup holders in the front. Oh okay. I'm just squeezing cups into this where they shouldn't be. The Germans really were of the opinion that the driver shouldn't be drinking and driving. Well, fuck that. <laughs> All right. And then in the sides, we have our wee ashtrays. All right, more smoking. Bangs everywhere. I suppose places hadn't quite outlawed it back in the 2000s. No, no. When this car was built, what was this? 2005, 2004. What the man must have been smoke. Whoa. Now I feel old. Yeah. No, now I feel young. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway. Now, here's, these, here's one feature that we have actually flip up by hand or is there like Yeah, yeah now they flip up. Oh. My head would feel rested. Hmm. Sad the one doesn't actually have a popper. You have to do it with by button at the front. Yeah, that's weird. But there you go. So there's one last feature on this, which is super duper cool, and we the haven't best. mentioned it yet. The it is feature. the best feature, even though we'll never ever ever use it. It's just cool. Our black 124 has this. Does the 123? Nope. Well, the 123 doesn't. I thought it did. Nope. Well, I'm one up over the 123. Yep. <laughs> come check this out. As I come back here, this is actually here. See this? This is the only thing that doesn't work in the car. Rear wiper. Like at all, it's rear wiper. I don't know why, but it doesn't. Everything else works. Yeah. Some of you. But anyway, check this out, right? Oh, there's stuff in the beta. There's a radiator. Out. Right, well, let's do a, a, a scene called What's in My Boot. <laughs> <laughs> what we got today. Well, as this is one of my vehicles, of course, it has a blanket in the back. Yes. Because that's kind of my vibe. That's my aesthetic. Yeah. The blanket in the back. So normally, because the convenience features aren't working right now, that, they are working. That would lift up. Yeah, it's on the wee rail here, mm -hmm. as you can see, and then it would... It would Actually. slide itself up into the roof there. Yeah, you can see where the channel goes up. Yeah. Unfortunately, that doesn't work quite nice, so forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, this combined cargo net and cargo hider thing is standard. It actually detaches off on this as well, doesn't it? I don't know. Well, no, it would have to yeah. for you to put your seats down. Yeah, fair enough. So it's the same as it has been in all Mercedes estates. So here we have... A radiator for what? A radiator for a Mark II Golf GTI. For what? God knows why. Uh, we have empty an explosive box. empty box. Empty box with dead fish. <laughs> and here's something we haven't plugged in a very long time. T-shirts. This is actually a delivery. Yes, uh, if you check out our website, 427motorsports.co.uk, you can actually order handmade t-shirts by us, printed in-house, designed by us, and made by us. And you'll help support our channel. 
Uh, this was actually a delivery that I'm doing of 12 t-shirts and 12 travel mugs. So it's a big hefty order. Big order. And I will be hand delivering them personally. Oh, so people get you delivering them if... If they're local. Don't tell them that, they'll never go try. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like a game as to, oh, what car will he be driving? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the boot. I'm ready for this. Aw, yeah. Oh, yeah! There's a design that hasn't changed. And there's leather in this as well, I yes. guess. A leather spec car would have to have leather. Yeah. And there's headrests in the back there, but check this out! I think you can. Ow! I'm too tall for this. <laughs> there's really for kids. Yeah, I'm really too tall for this, and I'm the shortest out of all of us, so I don't think anybody could actually sit in this. That looks like a couple of isn't it? Because it is, boy. Nice. <laughs> it needs a clean, it's still got child stuff, oh. stuff child liquid on it. <laughs> <laughs> liquid. All right, James Savile, thanks for that. <laughs> Uh, and you got some cleaning products in your cargo nets. Yep, I call You've probably got a 12 volt socket here, it is. There it yep, is. 12 volt socket here, too. And, uh, and does here, this open to reveal a spare tire? This? No, the spare tire is actually under this. Oh, is it? Yep. This opens. That sounds broken. That sounds broken. <laughs> in here. Oh. Oh. Car navigation. Is where the satellite navigation lives. That's ridiculous. The warning triangle. A lot of fuses and relays. Or is that just. That's like just the, some of them. The internally ones. And there's all the wiring for the tow bar as well. Nice. It's a very complicated tow bar wiring setup, I must yeah. say. Is that, a, is that a warning triangle folded up in there? Yep. You see, some? these don't hang about. Well, it's the law. You gotta have the triangle. No, you don't. It's not the law. In Germany, it is. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Like if someone was next to me, I'd just be like this. <laughs> It'd be pure cute. Like, like my knees would be on the on the tailgate. Will it close? Try it. I don't want to slam it. Don't slam it on me, but do do shut it. It's also got soft clothes, as you can hear there. Actually, How it's not too buddy? bad. Are we all right? Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm not too bad here. There's, but headrest, headroom wise, like that's not. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's got a mental problem. <laughs> well, he does. But oh, can you open it from the inside? Yeah, nice. You can open. Um, you know that one from the inside too. I was not aware of that. Oh, there's the handle. That's I guess nice. anywhere you have people sitting, you should you should be able to open it from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, like having a boot that opens from the inside. So that's kind of like all there is to see with it. Now you're the hardest man to please with this because. You I have like, a track record of hating modern marks. I like older marks. What? Really? Uh, so what do you think of it? Go on, tell it to me straight. I'm a big boy. I can, I can take you can the, handle it. I can take the hatred. You can handle it? Yeah. Um, I like it. You do? <laughs> Actually? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I wouldn't have one. Well, that's a surprise because it actually works and it's on the road. Of course <laughs> you wouldn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I do, I think they're well styled and I think um, I think green is nice and I think diesel is good for a workhorse. <laughs> you're really just giving us the bare minimum here of compliments, aren't you? Like, you're saying as a sum of its parts, it's a good vehicle. <laughs> it, it is It is good though, that's the thing. It, this, this was a re return to form for Mercedes. This was built to last, not like the 210. 210 is, yeah, fair enough. And I agree with you. They've lost, I think they've lost their way on styling at the front because you can't have this or this anymore in an E-Class. I actually don't think you can have this at all. I don't think you can spec. You know the way they went to the like the like SL looking grill for all of their cars? I think you can have the upright slat one, the Panamericana one now, but not the, you can't have it like this. And I don't like that, I think it should look like this. I think it should look like that, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but at least it does have, you know, the star and everything. And I like the frog eyes, or bug eyes, or... They're just eyes, all right? <laughs> it's like the guy from Lilo and Fist that has four eyes. Yeah, I always think of that, actually, yeah. What's his name? I think it's Jumba. Jumba. I should have called it Jumba instead. If it was purple, I'd have called it Jumba. Yeah. So, Connor, verdict on the new Mercedes to the fleet. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in between. Yeah, good purchase. That's all I could have asked for.
You were just going to leave the people without the burnout you promised them. Exactly. They, were, they were sticking around to the end of the video thinking they At were going to get a burnout, burnout. attempt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, let's see if it'll do it. Uh, in a diesel, in a four cylinder diesel. I, uh, yeah, a four cylinder diesel. Welcome to 427 <laughs> Motorsports. Here's a four cylinder <laughs> diesel. <laughs> I'm sorry if you wanted uh, Americana. Americana, yeah. I don't think it'll do it, but try it. We're gonna try. I think for every rear wheel drive car we get, this should be a test. Maybe everyone you get. Mine are good, thanks. <laughs> right, that's, that's, oh, do you hear that? Mm. She doesn't want to, does she? She kind of wants to. It did like a very like slow motion burnout. <laughs> All right, last try, okay? Okay, go on. Mercedes W211 will not burn out. Yeah. Okay, good, the key's in my hand. Okay. So that has been our latest purchase and partially my best purchase I think ever. This weekend alone, two days, I have done over 400 miles in this car driving from the top to the bottom of the country and I wouldn't have done it in any other car. Genuinely, not even one of the lovely marks we have here, I don't think I would have done it. No offense. I'm taking offense right now. <laughs> not even that, <laughs> having cruise control and they can have cruise control. A light throttle. Yeah, but yours don't. <laughs> I just meant out of our cars. I'm offended now. Wow. <laughs> but anyway, so over next year, we will be conducting some experiments on this, shall we say. We'll be trying to fix it, but we'll also be doing some comparisons between the E-Class of old. And the E-Class of nearly old. The E-Class of nearly old. <laughs> But also, uh, a little spicy contender, we also have a modern day Audi estate that is going to do some competitions against this to see which fares better. Mm. This is all road. Mm. It work. That'd be interesting. Yeah. So make sure to stay tuned next year to see how that goes. But this brings us to the end of the season. What a season it's been, it has been. What a year it's been for Dante Fires. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, like, it's been a really good year for content on our channel. We've grown more than we've ever grown before. Yeah. We've achieved an awful lot. Our quality has gone through the roof compared to what it was when we started out. Yeah. It's been a great year, it really has. <laughs> so we just want to thank everybody for sticking around with us. I know I kind of did a bit of a thank you at the end of one of the last videos, but now that we're here together to do this part, yep. we just want to say a big thanks to everyone. Uh, you've really kept us encouraged to do this. Your comments have been fantastic over the year and it's just been great. We've really enjoyed making the videos and we're going to continue to do so, so don't worry. Uh, we're going to take a bit of a break now until probably January, January, February. Okay, yeah. Uh, it sounds like you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> no, we're just going to take a bit of time to get better at editing and stuff like that. And hopefully bring you better content. Yeah, we want to bring better stuff. So we're going to work on our editing. We're going to get some nicer equipment to make life a bit easier for us. We're also kind of looking for a house at the minute. So that would help us as well. That would help us a lot. So there's just a few things we need to sort out. So we're going to take a little bit of a break, but Stay tuned next year because we have so much more coming. Like we're only just getting started now really. Like this is gonna be good. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching all year. Thank you very much for watching this. I've been Campbell Patterson. I've been Connor Hughes. And for the last time this year, please feel free to <laughs> feel free. Feel free. <laughs> I want to make you feel obliged. <laughs> uh, subscribe to our channel and follow me on Instagram at tamo.pallison. And Hughes Corporation. Oh yeah, you don't have any dots or spaces? No. Yeah, that's Keep the one. Simple. And we'll see you next year. We hope you all have a lovely Christmas. Yes, Merry Spend Christmas. Spend it with your family. Have a good time. Get very drunk probably make a stupid car purchase 
That's what Christmas is about. Definitely do that, yeah. Yeah. We it's, recommend. Yeah, it's about getting drunk, stoned, <laughs> and eating chicken fingers with your best friends. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. See you in the new year, and thank you very much from 47 Motorsports. Good luck. Good luck.